Hi, I'm Stephen Keller, and welcome to the LumenVox.com training video about using the LumenVox speech engine in a distributed architecture. We'll talk a little bit about what distributed computing is all about, why you'd want to use it, and then we'll get into using the LumenVox speech engine in this kind of environment. So if you're not familiar with distributed architecture, or you probably are, maybe just not under that term, uh, basically it's the idea of taking a single computing task and splitting it among multiple machines for a lot of different reasons. The main reason you want to do it is redundancy. If you have some sort of really critical system, let's say you've got your PBX, takes all your incoming calls. If that machine, let's say its power supply, catches fire and the entire thing melts, well, you don't want all your calls to suddenly just disappear because there's no PBX there. So what a lot of people do is they'll use multiple machines. If one fails, the others just pick up the slack. Uh, you can do this, uh, if you're doing it anyway, one thing you can do is what's called load balancing. And this basically lets you go ahead and you have all these different machines, they're going to pick up the slack for anyone that fails. Well, it's also just split up the task among these different machines. You know, if any one becomes too unbalanced, it's got too much to do because, you know, there's a, a huge traffic coming in, well, we'll just have the others all help out. We can evenly spread out the load and then no single computer becomes bogged down. The other great thing about distributed architecture is it's very scalable. I mean, it's really easy to add in more machines. So as your need grows, hopefully you, know, you do more and more business, your traffic grows, you get more calls, whatever it is, you just plug in more machines in this big cluster of machines and then there you go, you can handle the new traffic. So the LumenVox speech engine works really well in these kinds of environments. And that's because internally, we use a client-server model. Basically, we have two parts of our application when you install the speech engine. The first part is the speech client. And this is the thing that actually talks to your application. Uh, you might have some sort of platform that runs your IVRs. You might have a PBX that's integrated with us, something like that. Anyway, whatever application you're using, you, you have a client application. It actually talks to our speech client. Uh, maybe via MRCP, it might be via uh, API integration, whatever it is, you talk to our speech client, you send it audio, you send it grammars, and we send back decodes uh, with the actual text of what a user said. But internally, our speech client is then taking what you said and passing it to a speech server. That speech server is the application that actually performs the decode. Now, the client and the server talk to each other using just standard TCP IP port connections, which is great because unlike, say, an API integration, right? You have your API integration from your platform to our engine. Well, that API integration cannot traverse a network. API is on a local machine only. But our client and server talk to each other using TCP IP, which let them talk over a network. So we can have the speech client and the speech server on the same machine if we want. We can also take the speech engine and go put it on another machine and have this client talk to this speech server. Now the cool thing about doing this is it gives us a couple things. Uh, the big thing it lets us do is balance the load. Speech recognition is really, really resource intensive if you're doing a whole lot of it. If you have like a bunch of it at one time, you're using really big grammars, it's pretty easy. It takes a lot of memory, it takes a lot of uh, CPU, all this kind of thing. Well, you don't necessarily want that all happening on your PBX or your IVR server or whatever. So you can go ahead and just have the client, the speech client installed on your PBX and then have the speech server perform decodes on a separate machine. And that machine might just be dedicated to speech recognition, that kind of thing. Now, for all this to work, our speech client has a little routine in it that we call the server monitor. So the server monitor basically takes a list of speech servers to use and your client application supplies us where all your other speech servers are and it goes ahead and just routinely checks all the speech servers. So maybe you have three speech servers. You have A, B, and C. Well, you have your client set up on your PBX and these three other servers over here. Now what's going to happen is the server monitor is going to say constantly be talking to A, B, and C. Now if B suddenly melts and disappears, the server monitor says, ah, I can't get traffic back from B anymore. I'm not going to send any requests for speech decodes to B. I'll just go to A and C. Now, if B comes back online, the server monitor finds out and says, okay, B's back, we're going to go ahead and keep sending it decodes. So that's good because it gives you that kind of redundancy and automatic failover. Now, the other thing that it does is it keeps track of how busy each speech server is. So if A has a, you know, suddenly has some really big decode it has to do, it's really busy, we get another request for a decode, we're going to go ahead and send that request over to B or C. We're always going to send new decode requests to the server that's least busy. So we're sort of automatically just doing some load balancing if you have multiple servers set up. And sort of the final piece that lets us work in a distributed environment is our licensing. It's really convenient for this purpose. 
We don't care about how many installations of the engine and the client you have, at least from a licensing perspective. We don't have any sort of per seat or per, per server licenses. They're all per decode. You know, when you open up a speech port to do a decode, that's when you use a license. You can install the speech engine and the, the client and server on as many different machines as you want, and it never takes up a license until you start doing decodes. And the client is the one that asks for licenses when it does a decode, and it goes ahead and just looks at a licensed server. Licenses can be installed on the same machine as the client or on a different machine. So you can have 10 different speech clients talking to 20 different speech servers, all talking to one license server that's somewhere else. And you only ever use licenses when you're at actually doing decodes. So that's handy. Um, well, let's go ahead and take a look at a graphical representation. It might make this a little bit easier. Right here we have a graphic that represents one of our customers, a company called OnTelNet. And they had something similar to what we were talking about. They have all these PBX servers here that have incoming SIP traffic. And they've set up as a cluster, so you know, they're doing load balancing, that kind of thing. But you know, they have their PBX integrated with us, so our client application is on the actual systems that their PBXs are running, but their PBXs are really busy. They don't want to have to do speech decodes on their PBX servers because they're handling so many calls. What they'd rather do is what we see here and move the speech decodes onto other speech servers. So you see we have all these different speech servers. When one of these PBX machines gets a request to do some sort of speech recognition, that request goes off to the most appropriate speech server because again, the uh, server monitor on each client has a list of all the available speech servers and what they're doing, that kind of thing. And you can also see we have our license server. So all these clients talk to the license server. And we also have a backup license server with some licenses installed there as well. That way, if the main license server fails, switch right over to the backup and we're fine. OK, so if you want more information about this, a great place to go is our website at lumenvox.com. And we have a white paper actually on this topic, sort of detailing it a little more. You just go up to resources, hover over that resources tab, and then click white papers, and you'll see distributed architecture white paper. Uh, we also have sort of the nitty gritty technical details in the engine help document. Again, go to lumenvox.com, go click on support, find the little uh, speech engine section, click on help documentation, open up the speech engine help document, and then that'll basically document how to do this in MRCP and in the API. If you still have some questions, maybe you don't know how it works exactly with the platform you're using, Email Lumenvox support. It's support at lumenvox.com, and we can point you in the right direction exactly how to get it up and running with your system. I hope this video has given you an idea of why you'd want to use uh, distributed architecture with your speech recognition. And I hope it's given you a good idea of how it all works. And again, I encourage you to contact us with any further questions.